it's important to mention um, that every time I speak, even of my own personal journey, I always tell people that it's important to have a dream. And once you have that dream, you need to start living that dream. And then eventually you do what? Become that dream. And I think that is what we are seeing here with, and I'm gonna say throughout this conversation, I'm going to call you president. Yay! Thank you. Man. <laughs> because I, I want you to start living the dream so that eventually you become the dream. Thank you, sir. And when you get there, don't forget us. I can't. <laughs> I'll have the first interview with you on inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So um, in case you're seeing me for the first time, you're hearing me for the first time, as always, my name is Eugene Anangwe. <laughs> and I think it's important to mention that, you know, when he reached out to me, when Mr. President reached out, I had so many things uh, that I had planned, but I felt that this is an event that I was not going to miss. And I think from what we are seeing here, I think this is the best place that we all are spending our evening. And from the motivation and from the stories that we're hearing today, it's really thought provoking. It's asking us or making us to ask so many questions. I wanna start off, um, uh, Mr. President, just to try and understand, take us back. You mentioned, you know, some of the important things that when you got the awakening of starting the journey that you embarked on. But take us steps back. Take us through that journey. How, how, how was it? What, what was this that was, what was this fire that was burning in your stomach that was telling you that, you know what, there's more than what you see that you can actually contribute in terms of solutions to the challenges of education that you continue to see today. What was that? Yeah, thank you very much, Anangwe, for first of all believing in my dream um, and calling me Mr. President. Yeah. I think everybody will be doing that. Um, Anangwe, I think I was born into this. Mm -hmm. I was born into this purpose. Mm -hmm. Because it all starts with, even from the way I was born. Yeah. My mom was married in 1997. She was barren for two years. Yeah. And she gave birth to me as a miracle child yeah. in 1999. Yeah. And when I was born, my mother didn't have much in terms of getting me the opportunities like Pastor Hassan was talking about, yeah. uh, which I really loved. But I'm sure my mother didn't have most of that. It took one British lady. She forgot her color. She forgot everything. And she didn't just give me the clothes mm -hmm. because I would have worn them and don't like them anymore. Yeah. She didn't just give me the food. Yeah. She went on to send me to school, giving me an opportunity to learn. So, of course, I didn't understand this when I was young. Of course, this just think I'm going to school. Ah, there's this the British lady. They have money. They are from Britain anywhere. Well, uh, you know, you just think they have money because when you're in the village, every time you see a white person, yeah. you automatically see money. You either want to beg or something. Mm. But as I continue to grow and grow and grow, especially now, mm. there's that thinking and I'm going to say, somebody invested in me. Mm. Mm. One challenge come. Mm. When you go to Zimbabwe now, we have about five to 10,000 young people who are mm. under the Juice Leadership Initiative. Mm. So an investment that was made in me alone mm. is now of benefit to mm. thousands of students in Zimbabwe, mm. is now of benefit to Excela, to Riviera, uh, to, 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 to Kagarama, to, to, to IDB, to what all this. But this is something that I was just given. So that passion, I think it was fueled first by just the understanding that somebody invested in me. Yeah. How can I also become an investment to others? Yeah. So for me now, education shifted from just an opportunity to be better than others mm. or to access Harvard, as some of us just do. I want to get A's because I want to pass SAT because I want to go into Harvard. More than going into Harvard, mm. the greatest Harvard we need mm. is an education mm. that allows us also to raise other people mm. so that at the end of the day, we can be more. That's number one. Yeah. And then number two, you are this child who has been out of school for a long time. Yeah. You are now a child in school in the city. The city is so different from the rural. The school is so different from not going to school. One, there's an, there's, there are two things I had to ask myself. One, am I going to just let go of my experience of four years 
because of something they call intellectualism, mm -hmm. or I'm also going to invite the world to that which I've found that they don't have. That's why for those who know me, if I enter in your room, whether for stupid reasons or for good reasons, you will know I was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you that. <laughs> you will Because I always say to myself, if I'm going to that room, and I will live there with people just saying, Chikomo was here. Yeah. I let them know something about also me. That's yeah. why you see my stories about education. It's not we went to Java and we do this. I will still talk about the village. Mm. That's what I know and that is my story. Yeah. So that's where this drive is coming from. Yeah. And I think that's what fuels my passion. Right. Interesting. And, and I think what we need to understand also is that you're shaking very uh, sensitive tables. And I want to understand from where you sit, uh, what, what, what gives you this passion to continue to shake these tables and they're not weak tables, it's very, very strong tables. Yeah. And this is including trying to push for a change over an, or an overhaul of the education system. I like to call it decolonizing our education. Yeah. Because I also went to <coughs> university, <coughs> not because I didn't know what I was doing, because I studied in university uh, just 2020, yeah. when I'd cleared uh, high school around 2016, 20, I mean, uh, yeah, 2007, 2006. Yeah. And when I was in that university, a lot of people didn't even understand why I was there. Mm. Some even thought I was actually a lecturer. <laughs> because they were like, Anangwe, what are you doing? You're doing everything already. Mm -hmm. I was already working three jobs, mm -hmm. MCing, doing all those things, but I had to go to school because mm -hmm. the system wants you to have a degree. It doesn't matter which degree. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether even you will apply it or not. Mm -hmm. So when you continue to shake or rattle these tables, mm -hmm. what is it that pushes you? What is it that makes you feel that no matter what, you'll still continue to pursue this? I think I'll, I'll answer that question in two ways. Yeah. One of the things that I think I always say is my superpower yeah. is the conviction that I have. Mm -hmm. One, about my country. Mm -hmm. Two, about this continent. Mm -hmm. So for those who have worked with me, they know this. If I'm going to write a book, yeah. do you know what I do first? Yeah. I first call the designer and say, design the page, design the cover. Mm. And I, I print it out with nothing. Mm. And I just put it. And I start imagining people buying it, changing people's lives. And that's what pushes me to now come and write. Mm. Mm. If I'm going to have friends, I first if all imagine, how is our future going, going to be? I do big casting. I first think of the future and then come back with the steps and stuff. Yeah. So, And I believe that for leadership, I think one of the things we need is really conviction. What do you believe about the society you live in? Yeah. yeah. Like I can tell you now, I, I, there is this, this day was many people were telling me, you know, kids from America are smart. And I, no, it's not just they are smart. When a child is in America, they are told, America's land of the free. You are a master. You can do it. You are intelligent. You are the greatest of all time. Mm. Us here, we are told, uh, Gender America, you start your studies and then you come back, you change our lives. You've never seen like, that's why even when we go to America, we graduate the first day you graduate, you don't also think of impacting America. Like I used to laugh with my friend Izzy that I'm going to be a first donor who sponsor American kids to go to school. Because I, I mean, I just want to also see it happen. Yeah. Right? But what I'm trying to say is, we really need to ask yourself, what do we believe in? Yeah. Whether we are in church, whether we're in organizations yeah. or in life. Yeah. And for me, what I believe in is the future of this continent is deeply rooted in the potentials of our young people. Yeah. I believe that the, 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 the growth that this continent yearns for is not in the West, is not in the South, is not in the East, is deeply rooted in our people. Yeah. And that is the potential we need to unleash. Yeah. So when you see this passion, it's simply an explanation of the conviction that I have about the world. Yeah. So whether I know sometimes, for example, I was at Youth Connect the other day and they gave me the microphone to speak. And I was very, I, I sounded like I was very angry and I spoke about it. And many people said, why were you speaking like that? And I said, I said guys, this is a conviction that I have. I would rather die for that thing that yeah. I believe in yeah. than to live a thousand of days trying to pretend and be everywhere I know, I know I'm not. But yeah. also, yeah. I don't also think that I'm pushing tables or, or anything. Mm. I also want people to understand my message. Mm -hmm. One, mm -hmm. I'm not an advocate against schooling. Mm -hmm. But I'm, my, my advocacy is, can schools practice education mm -hmm. in the sense of unleashing potential? Mm -hmm. For example, my own university, African Leadership University, when you go there, um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not marketing, ah, but let me market my school. What's wrong about <laughs> market not? yours? Why not? Uh, why not? You see, at LU, when you go there, yeah. the first day you arrive, they don't say, 
This is the curriculum you need to finish the module. You need. They say, what is your mission for the African continent? Yeah. Say whatever you want about LU students. One thing that I will tell you, there is a sense of community responsibility even if we are in ignorance or whatever we can be. Mm. We, you say, I want to change this of mental health. Me, I want to do this. And that for me is what I'm calling for in school. Yeah. Let's have schools that are mission driven. Let's have schools where teachers don't see them as full beakers that are just feeding empty beakers. So, yeah. If the tables think I'm pushing, say, don't be educated, just go, I'm not the advocate yeah, for that thing. Yeah, yeah. And the governments, I'm saying, you as a government, it will be better for you mm. to have potentials unleashed so that the vision of Rwanda 2050 yeah. will only be the highest level it can reach in terms of its attainability is the level of the potential of its young people that has been unleashed. Yeah. Go to President Mnangagwa in Zimbabwe and say, President Mnangagwa, we can travel to all these countries, but if we don't do the travel of unleashing the potential of these young people, we'll create opportunities that foreigners come to take, people from outside the continent come to take, and we will not be responsible for developing that continent. If that is a push, then I don't know what we need as a continent. Yeah, it's very important even to say that you're sounding, uh, you know, the drums that you're beating for this transformation are very loud. But the question is, from where you sit, do you feel that they're loud enough? Are they listening? The people you're targeting to try and transform the education system or how education can be transformational and purposed to actually bring impact. Are they listening? First of all, it's good that you're talking about are the people that you need to talk to listening. Yeah. And now for a very long time, and let me make this confession to everybody. Yeah. I've always felt like we are Davids when we are like in the bush. Mm -hmm. You know, David in the bush killed a lot of animals and never, nobody knew about it. Yeah. One of the things that I keep on crying for, I'm tired of talking about Ejusere and Ejukare decolonizing education to a six-year-old and 12-year-old and 18-year-old who can't do anything. Mm. But I'm happy that we are also beginning to create a table where we can be listened to. Mm. Because I know today, for example, if you are going to go and post this, yeah. right voices might hear us. Yeah. If KC2 will be, uh, will, be, will be good enough to go and post this and talk about this, then we will be heard. So there is an outcry for the better platform that allow us to amplify our voices. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's one thing I've been crying for. Yeah. And it seems not to open very easily. Yeah. That's why some of us have decided to create it yeah. Yeah. so that we can be heard. Yeah. So we have been speaking, of course, some listen, but where I really want this voice to go, mm. I don't feel we have reached there. Yeah. And I don't expect to reach it in 2023. Yeah. It will take us time yeah. because I feel like this is a lifetime commitment. Yeah. But at least the young people are beginning to listen and get it. And I know when they speak it together with me, yeah. this continent shall hear. Two things that you'd want the person who's listening or the institutions that are listening, if they get to watch this mm -hmm. from wherever they are, what, what message do you want to tell Straightforward. them? Straightforward. I mean, one, anything about the youth with, without them is not for them. Let's stop saying young people, yeah, they want this. There is this campaign that has started. Do it for the young people. Do it for the... Let's bring young people to platforms that matter. Not for selfie pictures and Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I mean, we have a lot of young people who attend United Nations meetings and this thing, and the only thing we see, today I met the president, today I met this, today I met this. We need to start getting the right young people mm. with the right mindset to be on the platform, not to just hear. We have been hearing, we have been hearing, we have been hearing. How about we start thinking of bringing these young people on platform yeah. to start also contributing to the development we want? Just in Zimbabwe, for example, 67.7% of the total population of Zimbabwe are young people below the age of 35. Yeah. Go to the parliament and see how many young people are there. I don't want even to say the number. How about we start also coming up with the initiatives where these young people start sitting on platforms that matter? And I'm, I'm tired of sitting in Kasabo Innovation Hub somewhere down there. No one hears what we are talking about. And then we go home. We go again down there. We also want to sit on platform that matter yeah. and begin to talk about the future that we want. Right. Powerful. Very powerful. And I think what I want to tell you as a commitment, uh, because I love asking for commitments in every conversation that I have, I think it's very important to say this, um, that I've heard what was being said here in terms of pivoting, in terms of making changes within your career space. I think this is the best place even to say it that I personally want to commit that EAMG TV and the Anangwe Mentorship Program, which are my programs, will be able to offer a platform for us, Thank you. for us to be able to amplify these voices. And I think this is what we want to commit to do and be able to amplify the voices of what you do. Thank you for a round of applause. I think this is for all of us. Thank you very much. I, I want to try and uh, become a pastor, and Pastor Hassan will forgive me. <laughs>
I've read the Bible. And the number seven is a very conspicuous number. It appears on the Bible around 700 times, if I'm not wrong. Maybe I should actually become a pastor. <laughs> and, 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 and coming to what you've said, I've had the number seven yeah. so much. Seven years. Mm -hmm. Seven chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk to me a bit about that number seven. Yeah. I mean, why? And it's a number of completion. It's, 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 a, it's a very interesting thing looking at what is happening here, even here today. It's a blessed number. Yeah. But tell me about the untold stories. What, what you've not told Mbavazi <laughs> about this particular journey in terms of the, the book and, and the, the I, career. I, I, I think if Trevor is here, <laughs> he would be very happy to hear, to hear me saying seven, seven, because we always have a debate on Instagram about Sierra Seven and yeah. Messi. And yeah. I never <laughs> like this, the, that number when it comes to the Sierra Seven. Yeah. But yeah, first of all, this, this, these seven chapters, yeah. without uh, making it prophetic or anything or anything, I think my mentor, one of my mentors who taught me, unfortunately, she lost her son and she left uh, Rwanda. Mm. She's called Dr. Laid Muniri. Mm. She has been my mentor for a long time and she told me the best book for a young man like you, mm. or the, 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 she always tell me like, there's, there's a need for you to, she taught me two things. Yeah. One, yeah. I don't want to read that book and just hear about you like a young man standing on top of the mountain thinking that they are yeah. correct. Yeah. Let me also hear other people. Two, she told me that Seven is a good number for you for now. Mm, mm. Because it also allows you to go deep about what you really want to talk about. Mm, mm. So there's nothing really prophetic about seven for me. Yeah. But it's just that, 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 that also lesson I got and I yeah. felt like seven was good. But also what I didn't tell maybe many people about, 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 about this book and what many people in this room may not know or what, what. Mm. Is that, although it may look small. Yeah. It is for the, there are three books of this, Keriathon has three books. Yeah. Number, number, number one is this one called Keriathon. Yeah. Number two that is going to come next year yeah. is going to be called The Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. It's going to focus mainly on what the school is offering parallel to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the expectations of the industry. Then uh, the last, the last one uh, that I'm writing, like, that I'm writing with, um, I, should I say the name now? I shouldn't, <laughs> no. I shouldn't. Um, it's about education. It yeah. focuses, the, it's the teacher, the, 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 the teacher that schools of education failed yeah. to produce. We are like on chapter six. Yeah. So those are three projects for career tone that are coming. So yeah. when you read this, you are going to see some of those books are mentioned. So it's not over yet. Right, it's not over yet. Yeah. Uh, very, very powerful uh, actually in that particular sense. I want to understand also, what, what is your biggest fear? I mean, when you put this together, what is that fear that probably you have um, in the whole project? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because we all have that fear. Mm -hmm. There's something that speaks to us and tells us, oh yeah, you're not actually on the right track. Yeah. But then there's that conviction that tells us to keep going. Uh, it's being misunderstood. Yeah. One of the things that you guys are going to see, Jean-Michel was very right when he was saying, those of you who have heard from Chikomo will hear those things. Mm -hmm. I'm a very radical person. Yeah. And you're going to see even the tone is radical. Mm. And sometimes people may misunderstand me and they can start talking about their own things. One day I was going to a certain high school to talk and the teacher said, the teacher is my friend, by the way. I don't know why you were saying that. Mm. He went to this kid and says, oh, Chikomo is coming. All of you are going to be taught how to hate school. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm not teaching anybody to hate school. Yeah. I've gone to university. I'm yeah. still even doing my master's. Yeah. I love school. Yeah. But you see, I'm being misunderstood because sometimes I come too radical and sometimes people can misunderstand me. Yeah. So this is one of my fear every time. Even when I want to say something, I'm like, huh, my one sentence will mean 1,000 things. I'm not like Israel here, the calm guy <laughs> who talks and you can get what, I'm this radical guy that my one statement yeah. might mean 1,000 things. Yeah. And you know, most of the time what I've been fighting doing, I say one thing there, you find 10 interpretations of it. And I'm now living my life, you know, like Martin Luther King Jr. when he was in prison, when he wrote, the, when he wrote a letter talking about why he's fight, the church had written him a letter telling him, why are you doing this condemning? And he said to him, to them, I've only responded to you because you are men of reputation and men that I value. If it was someone else, I would not have responded because I would not fight my, I would not do my purpose. I will live my entire life trying to defend what I've said. Yeah. But because you are men of reputation and men I believe have platform, I really, and he wrote a book called Letters from Birmingham Prison, I think. I read it, I think it's Esther who gave me that book. Mm -hmm. So for me also sometimes that's what I go through. Yeah. I have to respond to a lot of things yeah. Yeah. because of sometimes. So that's always my greatest fear that, oh, 
I'm going to be misunderstood. Yeah. But it's good that at least you understand yeah. and you know how to uh, go about that. What keeps you going? Mm -hmm. uh, apart from the love you have for your grandma. What do keeps you, it going? Do you want the truth or do you want a diplomatic answer? I want the truth. It's God. <laughs> it's God. Yeah. God keeps me going, guys. Um, I've understood that he is in me. Yeah. He is my identity. When I go into rooms, I speak with confidence, yeah. not because of the village I come from, yeah. but because of the understanding of who is in me. Yeah. When I go anywhere, I walk boldly and with the confidence. Actually, my Mendo Chara always tell me one thing, Shalin, be a vessel, mm. never be Shalin. Mm. Let him do what he wants to do. She told me something when I was raised, are people going to come? And she said, by the way, I want you guys to give a round of applause to Shara. She has yeah. been calling me yeah. and sure. praying with me the whole week, yeah. consistently. And she said to me, Shalin, don't stress yourself. The people that need to be in the room are going to be in the room. Mm. God, what God wants to happen, he will do it. And trust me, it has been so easy. To even tell these guys, we went to KC2, they said, come, we went to Royal, it has been so easy. Mm. Mm. I wouldn't lie to any young people in this room and say, I read a certain philosopher who said anything, <laughs> trust me, I read, but what keeps me going for me is my faith in Christ Jesus. Right, powerful, <laughs> powerful. What are the quick three tips that you'll be able to give for anyone who wants to tell their own story through authoring in that particular sense? Number one, don't, don't go to America and st try to sing hip hop. It will take you time to blow. Go and dance the Rwandan dance. It's not there, it will be unique and it will be respected. Yeah. It's about time as Africans, we take what is ours, original and authentic and we give it to the world. Yeah. Benna Boy and the Davidos from Nigeria have done it. See how the world is appreciating the songs from West Africa. We can also do that with writing. Let us go ahead and do the same. Yeah. Number, 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 number two, the thing, let's also read. Read, read, read. When I, when I was writing this book, many people were saying, ah, sorry, sorry, the people. Africans, ah, especially here in Rwanda, we don't even like reading. And it acts like it's a nice thing. It has, been, it has been made so nice and stuff. Let's read. There is power in reading. Let's definitely go because it is only when demand is high that supply can also increase. Yeah. Let's go into bookshops and read because then our people will be able to write. And then number three, we, we always laugh in Zimbabwe saying this thing. As a, as a boyfriend or as a girlfriend, read. Don't just go where people are talking. And you know those people who just say, ah, economy in Rwanda, ah, things are very hard. No, articulate the position. You can't just be coming and say things are very hard. No, go deeper. Talk about the micro and macroeconomics. You know, we need also to consume more. You know, nowadays, because of this entrepreneurship, two days into university, I already have a business idea. Mm. The depth of the business idea is a report card of the knowledge you have accumulated. Mm. The challenges of Africa are deep, they are complex, they are vast, they don't require microwave solutions. So if we really want to build this continent, let's take time consuming. Because what we consume will hand one day to tell. Because you see these problems, you are saying this president is doing that. Tomorrow we are going to be the presidents of this continent. Yeah. And the people are going to say the same thing to us. This is time of consumption. So when time to show comes, we will appear and show perfectly that we have been preparing. Right, right, right. You can also close with your thoughts on the power of mentorship. Because there's been a lot of mentorship that has happened for you personally, yeah. someone held your hand, someone <coughs> believed in you, and here you are now wanting to impact generations in that sense. What do you tell the people in this room today in terms of urging them also to become, you know, that person who also lights up the candles of others instead of blowing them off? Please, mentorship is very, very important. If the moment you see yourself outgrowing mentorship, you have begun, begun, be, you have begun the process of falling. And when I say mentorship, nowadays we have a lot of problems of mentor, 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 mentor everywhere. Mm. You really need to judge mentorship according to this. How much of yourself is unleashed as you're with those people? You see, for example, Shara, Jean Michel, Emeline, Pastor Hassan, Pastor David there, uh, all my own friends, Albert, Izzy, and all these guys. They, they have contributed to me. And I'm sure today Jean Michel is happy to see me not ordering a book about debate but authoring a book about Ejusere. He didn't convert me to, to like what he likes. Mm. He came into what I like, and even us, and, and even when they invited me for Dreamers Academy, mm. they didn't give me a class for debate. Mm. Yes, I can debate, but they know where my passion is. Yeah. They gave me a leadership class. So when I went to CLA, Pastor David did not send me to intercession. He yeah. made me the chairman of Campus Fusion because he knows my love for those people. Yeah. In this room, I just want to say, 
Your mentors should be those people who look at what you really love and fight daily to really help you achieve it. You can't believe how many nights people like Chara spend just helping me to get through an interview. Yeah. And sometimes these mentors, you know, they, they can change your ideas yeah. to them. Some of you who have gone to university, you know this with supervisors for projects. You end up defending a thesis that doesn't represent your ideas because everything is now red. But I love, I, love, I love people like Chara. She will literally tell you, tell me your story. What mm. do you want to say? Mm. What moves your heart? And she always told me, authenticity comes when you're sharing your own story. What I can help you is to structure it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think my mentors are proud yeah. to see me not launching ID Bet book, but yeah. Kariathon. Yeah. To see me not launching Itoka group uh, uh, a book, mm. but launching Kariathon. This is what I love, but they're guiding me to achieve it. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, President Charlene Chikomo. Let's all be upstanding. <laughs>